In this video, I'm going to go over how to loop through some units in Lua. So this would assume you have a bunch of units uh, like aircraft that are all named with the same prefix and then have a number after them, like 1 through 12, something like that. Fairly common if you have a bunch of units in the same class, you'll tell them you know they're all called Eagle and it'll be 12, so it'll be Eagle 1, Eagle 2, Eagle 3. If they're named properly like that, you can loop through, loop through them fairly easily. So, so I'm just going to start out with a simple loop. 4i equals 1 comma 10 do, and then I'm going to tell it to print i, and all i is is the increment. So it's going to start at 1, and then each time it gets to the end, it's going to go up by 1. So if this works, it should print out 1 through 10. There you go, you can see it printed out 1 through 10. So since i is whatever that value is, if your aircraft are 1 through 10, this could work pretty well. So over here, I have a base, and on it I have eagles 1 through 12. So if we go back to the console, and we expand this a little bit, we could do, say we want to change or assign them to a mission. Set it, assign unit to mission, and I'm gonna paste that into the console. Close that. Ah. Uh, let's see, in the middle of the for loop, send, edit, assign unit to mission. The unit name, this is gonna be eagle space pound sign and then it's going to be the dot dot syntax with the i since this is this part right here is a string this part here is a variable to have them together you need the dot dot to concatenate them i believe and then i have a mission set up already called cap so i'm going to replace that and if we do this right it should change planes 1 through 10 to be on the cap mission. And let's go look at it. And there you go. So you could also do this for a loadout. So right now I have these all set to ferry. Uh, if you go over here and look at the different loadouts, um, actually we probably should go look and see what we have available. I think I only did the first one. If we go under ready and arm, yeah, there's a couple of them, light, medium, and heavy. Uh, we'll try to do this one. You need the DBID, which I don't think is in this screen. But if you click on the unit and bring up its details, it will be here. Uh, and here is that same loadout. And if you scroll all the way over to the side, there it is right there. 25260, I'll copy that. Probably need to know what the actual function is to do this. So I'm just going to put this number down there, and it didn't work because you can't copy stuff out of the database viewer because that would be too easy. So let's see, what one is that? 25260. Go back over here, and we'll search for loadout. And there's a better example than that. Set of units loadout and ready time. Send it, edit, set loadout. You need the unit name and then the database ID and the time to ready is optional. Back to the Lua. Unit name, this is going to be string, so it's in quotes. dot dot i loadout id is going to be what i wrote down there 25260 time to ready i'm going to say we'll just say 30 minutes if you don't have i think it works fine without that on there it'll just be the default ready time which is probably something like four hours so let's see what it's going to do 4i equals 1 through 10 let's go ahead and make this 12 this time so then it set loadout unit name eagle number 1 through 12, load on ID, and that should work, and it doesn't like it, because I have that number down at the bottom probably, it's probably, uh, might already have done it, close that, close that, 
Nope, they're still on the ferry loadout. Let's go back here. And now... Aha, look at that. So we signed them on to the CAP mission, and they're now changed the loadout from ferry to heavy, and then it's got a 30 minute ready time. And we could have easily done both of those things at the same time. So let's copy that, and we'll go backwards to, that's where it's assigning it to the CAP, get rid of that. Change that back. This time we'll do a different loadout ID, and then I also have a second cap called cap2, because I'm clever like that. Go back over here, and it was any of the ones, so there was a light one and a medium, I think those should work, although there's more down there. Probably these. I think that'll work. 225259. Two, two, Two five two five. So with any luck, they're going to change to the lights load out, and then they should all be on cap two. Uh, let's see. I'm going to close these. Run it. And we'll go back to the base. And now they're on the light, um, except for two of them. Could have changed the ready time to make sure that was different too. And two of them still aren't on a cap. Because I'm still, because uh, I went backwards. Originally I had only done uh, 1 through 10, it's 1 through 12 now. Uh, let's just change this to 120 minutes. Uh, we'll put them all on cap, the original cap. Run it again. Go back here. And there now, they're all on the cap mission. And they all have the light load out. And 120 minutes is two hours. Cool. So that, that all worked really well, and in the game, I believe this actually would work. However, we're doing this at the beginning of the game where nothing is lost. What would happen if these units, some of them were destroyed already? Would this continue to run? Uh, in the past, I've always thought that no, it wouldn't. As soon as it gets to the first one that doesn't exist, and we'll simulate this by changing this to 15, there's only 12 aircraft. Uh, let's go ahead and change it to cap two. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the loadout because I'm happy with what it is. That's fine. We've proved that we can do it. When it gets to 13, 14, and 15, they're not going to exist. What's going to happen when that happens? Let's press run. And you got an error. Unit X was not found in the scenario unit list. Basically, that's saying when it got to the 13th one, it didn't know what to do. Uh, so let's close this out. I'm not even sure now what I actually did. What did we do? Change it to the cap two mission. So it did fine up until it hit that, but then it erred. So what happens if Eagle number one doesn't exist? Let's rename this. And I'm gonna now say that's Eagle number 15. And now when we go back and do this again, it's gonna error on the first one. So what's gonna happen to the other one? So I'm gonna change this back to just be cap. If it worked properly, all of them would be changed to just cap from the cap two, but got an error right off the bat. So now when I go back over here and look at this, they're all on still on cap two because when it got to loop item number one, it didn't exist and it erred. But this doesn't seem to affect the game. In the game, I believe this code would have run and that's because there is a way to emulate the game. The console, it's going to give you an error. But if you go read, da, 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 if you go read at the very top of this, I know nobody likes to read any text, but in here it says error handling. And if you look down in here somewhere, it says here, 
to emulate the expected outcome from an event, so this would be in the game, if you put this and tell it to emulate, I think it'll give you different behavior. There's an extra quote, mark, single quote. So now when I tell this to run, nothing's actually going to happen in the console. There, I clicked it, but nothing changed up here. If I go look at the Lua history console, though, the Lua history log, which I'm using Snaketail over here to keep track of that, and I scroll down to the bottom, here is what it actually did. It erred on the first one, and then I, so after it runs, after it checks for something, then it prints the value of i. So the error is first, then it's printing the value of i, one, but that's really, this is really the first unit that doesn't exist and it's erroring. But look, that it still went through the rest of them and changed them. And then when it gets to these other ones that don't exist, it errors, but doesn't exit the code like it looks like it does when you're in the Lua console. So let's go make sure, if we go back to the game, they were on cap two. If we go check them now, they should be on cap. There you go. So in the, in the past, I've seen a lot of examples where there's a check in here to see if this is not equal to nil. You'll see something like, uh, what would it look like? It would look like if is not equal to nil, and then there'd be a then, and then there'd have to be another n, and then you do some stuff in here. Uh, that's, that's the way I've been doing it, but in playing around with this today, I'm pretty sure in the game that's not necessarily needed unless you're doing something fancy. The only time I found that this check is needed is if you set up a variable to hold the unit. So if you did local u equals send edit it get unit such and such, and then you used u.name in the loop when it got to u.name and the i, whatever number the i was in the loop didn't exist, it would give you an error. Uh, so what's some other uses you can do with the loop? Uh, there's a pretty interesting one in here about uh, biologics. There we go. So here's some code. If you want to put a bunch of random biological or units in a given area, uh, you need to know the lat and longitude of the box, basically. Um, and then in here, let's see. So here is the loop for i equals one comma bio, and up here, well, up here, bio num is a random number between 35 and 55. That way, it's just sort of different. You might have more biologics one time than the next time. It's going to do one through whatever the random number is, and it's going to loop through here and create a new biological unit, which is a you know a whale or a school of fish or something in the ocean. Uh, and I think that's that's sort of a neat chunk of code. That was one of the earlier things that I found and played around with that helped me learn a lot about Lua.